Hey guys, it's Faces Sims, and we are back with more Radiant Tale, continuing where we left off. Which, it's been a day or so. Look, it's really hard right now trying to, like, record two common rounds of two games, man. <laughs> so, like, I didn't get to play any of these yesterday. I'm like, it's been, like, two days. Like, ugh, I gotta balance things better. But anyway, um, right. We were going to, based on this, see Abby and tell him, like, no! We're not gonna do what you said and have our people fight because we found out all of Ion's little secrets. Well, you know, at least his big secret, poor thing. Anyway, I went along with Vilio, Ion, and Ginia to the seventh arena where Avi was. As a noble of our theater, Ginia, Ginia had avoided showing himself in public so he wouldn't provoke the citizens, but this time he actually volunteered, for once, saying that his status might be useful. <laughs> I love Ginia so much. So you told them all about your past, huh? Yes. There's no need to hide at this point. Even if I wish to forget, the reality is that I was a gladiator slave. X-Rank Gladiator. The gladiators that fought in the underground arena. Those who survived the duels there hold immense strength that can't be measured by the normal standards of gladiators in A-Rank, B-Rank, or C-Rank. Thus, they are treated as exceptions and are given the rank of X. Hold on, I gotta turn my phone. Okay, seriously, computer, just because I turned it down doesn't mean you bring it back up to, like, 86. Stupid. This computer sucks. Uh, and even if you want to forget, huh? Oh, even if you want to forget, huh? Hey, Abby, if Ion was your former co-worker, does that mean you were a gladiator slave, too? Abby, too. Abby and Ion are both former gladiator slaves. After the purge three years ago, Abby was released because he had no emblem on him, and he began to live in Ferris once again. Later on, he displayed a magnificent talent as a merchant, and he rose up the ladder all the way to becoming an arena owner. Oh, okay. Interesting. Mm, yeah, though I was a small fry compared to him. Ion was quite the legend, you know. He never suffered a single loss in his career as a gladiator up until the arena was abolished. The spectators dubbed him the Grim Reaper of the Underground Arena. Has he killed so many people? That's so terrifying. Poor fucking Ion. Grim Reaper, Ion's alias back when he was a gladiator slave. The Grim Reaper of the Underground Arena. Once you meet him in the Underground Arena, don't even think about seeing the light of day again. Such rumors earned him this moniker. An undefeated champion with no losses on record, standing until the Underground Arena was abolished. I feel like reading this in, like, peppy tour guide voice is, like, so much fucking worse because it's, like, all slightly traumatic. Grim Reaper... That's very different from the impression Ion gives off now. I mean, it was like kill or be killed. He didn't really have much of a choice, you know? Ellie also mentioned that his combat prowess was a cut above the rest in every single drill he was asked to attend. Still, the epithet Grim Reaper isn't elegant at all. Hmm. Let us move on to why we came here today. All right, I was waiting for this. We want to ask for your aid in our show. Now, of course, leave it to me. I'll give you a fair treatment, don't worry. Okay, let's start working out the details right away. The main act will be the Grim Reaper versus the Dragon. The guys here have a high standard, so we gotta give them a real death match. We'll have weapons and you'll fight each other seri- No, that's not gonna happen. Abby began rambling in high spirits, but Vilio cut him off. Thank you for your offer, but we've decided to decline. Are you for real- why are you saying no? I realized Abby started sounding a little bit too much like frickin' Vilio, so I just like to on. I get that it has a lot of advantages, but it's our show, motherfucker. It won't work out. Well, I mean, it's both of these. Like, it's our show, but it also won't work out. Like, I don't know. It won't work out. Oh, we were on that one. Okay. The first thing's first. Your idea won't work out. You don't know a thing about dragons, do you? What do you mean by that? I watched a few duels inside the arenas after we got here, and, well, I think Ion's loads stronger than the guys that call themselves A-rank gladiators. He'd crush them even three against one. But even if he's that strong, he wouldn't last two seconds in a fight against a dragon. Ophelio's pouting like, 
You won the last two seconds of fight against me. Oof. <laughs> it's so cute. But also, he's a fucking dragon, so, like, valid. An overwhelmingly one-sided battle won't turn into one of those serious standoffs you all love and worship, right? And that's why I'm saying your plan's faulty. Am I clear, my dear? <laughs> that is so condescending! Am I clear, my dear? Like, pat you on the head. Nice try, sweetie. Like, oh. <laughs> Ginny of the sass. Leaving the picky spectators in awe with the thrill of witnessing a battle to the death. That was what Avi had insisted on, and why he couldn't make any objections right now. Using Ferris's own way to describe it, Ginny outplayed him, securing a brilliant victory. After hearing what we had to say... Eh, fine, I get it. Avi roughly ruffled his hair as he let out an exaggerated sigh. Someone gave you a nice effortless strategy, but you just threw it out the window. You've always been like this. Bad at adapting. Stubborn as a mule. And this is the kind of human I am. I cannot change so easily. I may not seem like it, but I respect how shrewdly you navigate life. You? Respect me? Not funny, dude. With a wry smile, Abby laid his hand on Ion's shoulder. Okay, so my plan's out. Why are you asking for my help? And though a deathmatch is not our style, your idea itself has merits. Let's use your connections in arena. Let us use your connections in arena. Saying no isn't an option, okay? What? All right, your turn, you two. Leave it to me. My apologies. Billy and I enclosed in on Abby from both sides and seized him. After some forceful persuasion, the two climbed onto the stage. So, like, we're assaulting people now? Well, now, nobody saw this coming. The seventh arena's exhibition match today is a surprise that'll blow you all away. On one side, we have an old friend of our arena owner, Avi, the legendary gladiator, Ion. And on the other... is a legendary fae, a dragon. Did she say a dragon? For real? But I thought we weren't going to do this match. What are we doing? That sounds like an insane demo! Huh. I just made Luno do that on a whim, but it looks like she's pretty into it, eh? She really is. She's making it up on the spot, but she's brilliant. The request we made of Avi was to use this entire seventh arena for our promotion. In the background, Luna, who'd been hastily given the role of an announcer, made commentary. While on the stage, Vilio and Dragonform faced off against Ion, who stood ready with his spear. A very confused... We were like, we're not going to have them fight each other, but we're going to fake fight each I mean, like, so when I was like, have them fight to the death, we were like, uh, no, they're going to hurt each other. But I was like, why couldn't we turn that into like, oh, a fake fight? You know what I mean? Make it look real, but we're performers. We can manage it. You know what I mean? You know? And instead of blood, it's like glitter. <laughs> we can magic this shit. But they're like, no, no, we're not going to do this. We don't want friends to get hurt and everything. But then they're here to promote and we're basically... I'm sure it's going to turn out not exactly, but we're basically doing what he suggested. So I'm a little confused as, that won't work, but also let's do it. Sort of. Like... I mean, I get it if they were going to adapt, but again, I feel like the game could have... I mean, maybe that was supposed to be the surprise or something. But it feels like they could have been like, hmm, we kind of like your idea, but we want to change things. You know, instead of like, nah, it's not going to work. Let's do it anyway. Like, but adapt it. That, that's what you could have just said from the start, you know? I don't know. Anyway. Oh, you deal with this, Ion. Filio roared as the walls of Inferno burst into existence, standing in Ion's way as they manifested one after another. This is nothing. Ion thrust his spear into the ground and used it to vault above the flames, weaving both over and under them as needed. Kind of suspected he was going to pull vault over them. Or spear vault, I guess. Seeing the breaths of fire spew out, the audience clapped with zeal. What is that, buddy? Birds in Jesus. Did he do a lot to construction? It was very rumbly. That's the real deal! It's a dragon, man! I've never seen that gladiator around here before, but he's strong enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a dragon! Gets my blood pumping! Ugh. But is this really a fight? They seem to be having fun. 
They're both smiling. Why are they even fighting? The spectator battle had grabbed everyone's interest. Oh, the spectacular battle, sorry. Grabbed everyone's interest, so that was my cue. I accepted the voice amplifying mystic tool from Luna and addressed the crowd. The microphone, I love that. The voice amplifying mystic tool! Long way of saying the mic. <laughs> Hello, everyone! Are you enjoying this battle between gladiator and dragon? But wait! This duel is only a prologue! Our tale of human and dragon is just beginning! This is only a rehearsal today, so we'll have to end things here, but... Those who want to see what happens next, please take one of the flyers at the arena entrance. And come watch Circus's show! Hopefully this teaser would attract more people on the big day. So they're like, wait, 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 he's gonna battle, and then like, okay, so we're gonna... We're gonna fake it. Which is, I mean, again, like, kind of expected, but instead of them saying that, like, yeah, I kind of like the idea, but let's adapt it. And maybe, maybe we actually did, and I just forgot. That's, that's very valid. With that in mind, we continued to promote as much as we could. Alright, well. Cool, cool. Time flew by, and, and after much promotion and practice, the big day had come. Woohoo! There was still some time before the opening, but the seats were already jam-packed. Luna, I brought the kids along like you told me to, but is it really alright for us to watch this circus for free? Yeah, they say they want as many people to watch as possible. Come on, everyone, line up! Okay. Big, single file! Did you guys cause any trouble for the matron after I left? Have you all been good boys and girls? Yep, I was very good. Luna, you should come play with us more. That's right, you're part of our family, so come home and visit once in a while. All right, I will. Oh, you're the seventh arenas. Oh, I'm surprised you even have... Oh, I'm surprised even you have come to watch. Well, an old friend's gonna be on the stage. I only came out of curiosity. A dragon and a gladiator. Can't wait to see what kind of fight it'll turn out to be. There's a lot of people. I'm surprised, too. This is nothing like our first performance. And still too early to celebrate. We've yet to arrive at the hardest part. Practically promoted to everyone we came across without any filtering. Lo and behold, we've got as much variety as a bazaar. God, I love our clown boyfriend. Boob window is so distracting. I mean, Ion's abs should be distracting, but, like, you know, that's kind of par for the course, you know? Like, seeing, like, sexy man abs, but, like, the boob window is, like, I don't know. Bloody. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, you whore. <laughs> Next you're gonna show me ankle. <laughs> that raises our hurdle to the skies. Keep yourselves on your toes. Of course. We've chosen a program that'll resonate with them, so all that's left is to put in our best effort. I love how Rady is always in his fucking little fluffball form, rarely ever in cute boy form. It's so disjointing when he pops up and you're like, all right, you're hot. <laughs> like, so bizarre. As we braced ourselves one final time, Vilio raised his voice and made an announcement. Our star this time's Ion, right? And before we start, it's time for a speech, don't you think? Pardon? No, uh, I'm not suited to such a task. Come on, listen to yourself. You're the only one that fits the bill this time. Give up already and go for it. If you really don't want to, how about I do the honors and speak on your behalf? Wait, I'm rather against that. I'm willing to bet none of it will be accurate. Come on, Ion. Our audience is waiting for us, too. If the alternative is someone making a melodrama out of it, taking the initiative to talk would be much more preferable. Ion seemed a little lost, but he finally caved under our combined gazes. <laughs> he looked so sad! I am aware that I have said this before, but I'm a human who's only good for wielding weapons, and that's the only thing I've done for as long as I can remember. However, all of you have taught me that even if I am such a man, I too can make people smile. Oh my god, he's so sweet. I want the people of this city to understand that emotion as well, and to understand what it means to truly enjoy something from the bottom of their heart. I have faith that our show can teach them that. And that's why I... Um... Let us all do our best together. 
Rand didn't have a silver tongue, and he faltered as he spoke. Even so, his words fit us very well. My apologies. I don't make a good speech. It's perfectly fine. The important thing is that you're the one talking, Ion. Alrighty then. Don't miss the cue, guys. Three, two, one. Let's do this! We all traded a look and smile before collectively answering Vilio's call. Yeah! I'm sorry. Yeah! Group voices are the valley girl. I feel like I should just narrate, and this should be like, instead of tour guide spacey, we should read all of the glossary terms like this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the greetings are dear citizens of Ferris. I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to come to our show today. Tonight, our performances may be a tad peculiar compared to the duels you all attend on a regular basis. Here, there'll be no screeching of steel, nor dances of blood. However, on this stage, you'll find dreams, inspiration, and fantasy. I mean, you're a fantasy dream from other rest. Anyway. <laughs> you're a dream of fantasy. Your fashion is inspiring. Well, you know, he ain't wrong. <laughs> and please enjoy our show to your heart's content. As darkness swallowed the, ar the arena lights, I took over narration and began unfolding the tale. This is a story of King Arthur and his dragon companion... Ragules? Ragules? Why? That's... It's... Ragules? Ragules? Like, how do you pronounce that? And it sounds awful, no matter which way you do. Because it's like jewels, like regule, reg ragules. Like, none of it sounds right. Like, that, this is a terrible name. The meeting between the two powerful beings who would go on to build the world as we know it. You know that a dragon called, whatever, is mentioned in the Epic of King Arthur, but, but like, is it... Like, <laughs> I can't... Ragules? Ragules? Any way you say that, it just sounds so, like, lame. It doesn't sound good. It's like, oh, You sound like the sad little dragon everybody made fun of. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think you should have more of an epic name, and this is very unepic. I don't know. A dragon who became friends with the first king, Arthur, a thousand years ago. He created this world with Arthur and the four great spirits. If I remember correctly, in the stories we know, the only thing we learn about him is that he was King Arthur's comrade in arms. I think that's the case for me, too. It's the famous legend of Arthur creating our world with the four great spirits, right? So, you're saying there's a different version passed down on the Dragon's Island? We'd used Ion and Vilio to attract spectators with the show centered around a human and a dragon. We decided to center our program around those two figures. Then, in our discussion afterward... We began sharing the stories and legends we each knew, thinking that we might find a breakthrough somewhere. Well, the gist is the same, yeah. But among dragons, the part before all that's passed down, too. When Arthur first encountered... Whatever. <laughs> I can't. I can't figure out how to pronounce that. I'm not even going to try. Apparently, those two were the first to form a friendship between our species. When Arthur established our world, the four great spirits were, of course, vital. But what's-his-face played a big part as well. I can't. It's like... Like, Ragules? Ragules? Like, Ragules is actually probably the best, but it still sounds just wrong. Just, it sounds so sad and pathetic. You know what I mean? Like, you're trying to craft a name for, like, this great all-powerful trend, and you came up with that? I just... It just... Doesn't it just... You're like... Sounds like the nerdy freaking dragon with the pocket protector and he's pushing his little glasses up. You know? Because he can't see very well. Also can't create fire. <laughs> and the first ever bond of friendship between a human and a dragon. I see. Sounds wonderful when you put it that way. Just asking, but are we... But are we dragons pretty much the only ones who know this story? 
Well, I think so, yes. The most common folk only learned of the world's legends through picture books, after all. But of course the royal family, as well as people with ties to the palace, are aware. But some researchers investigate dragons, too. Well, I've also heard about how the first king was friends with a dragon. I didn't know that. Hmm. The story might be useful for us. So... Does that mean you're gonna go with a tale of friendship between the two? Yeah, I've only got the outline in my mind so far, but... Everyone in this country knew about the legend of King Arthur, the creator of, our, creator of our world. In our show this time, we'd unravel the tale of Arthur's first meeting with his comrade-in-arms, the dragon... What were we going with Ragulies? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> That's the best version of however you could pronounce this. And how oh, the two eventually became friends. Let's turn back the clock a thousand years to a time before the Major Five had been founded. Back then, in a forest near where our modern capital lies, there was one lone dragon who'd settled down amidst the trees. Ragulies, played by Vilio. Even among dragons, who are said to be the most powerful of all fae, he stood out with his absolute might. His name was Ragulies, or whatever it's supposed to be. Ragules? That sounds like ragu. Like he's a pasta sauce. What the fuck? I can't. I can't. Sometimes the names here get a little fucking ridiculous and not in a fun... Like, kind of in a fun way, but it's like they're just so ridiculously bonkers that you're like, how do you pronounce any of this? Because... There was no end to the human who came to challenge him, seeking to test their strength, and and his tedious days dragged on and on. I feel like if Arthur played by Ion, um, I feel like if Vilio has to have lines, he would be saying them very awkwardly because he does not act. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to read it like that. However, it all changed one day when a young man named Arthur visited the dragon's abode, which is where our story begins. And another impudent human has come, I see. <laughs> I'm not going to do that the whole time, but it's kind of funny. No matter how many accolades you wear in your garb, you will not even manage a scratch on my scales. Leave her, suffer the consequences. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to back down. After all, I am here because... Another stubborn and deaf one has predicted. You'll live to regret your folly. No, wait. You've got the wrong idea. I'm... Screw the useless chatter! Oh, save the useless chatter. Whoops. Save the useless chatter! The flames Vilio breathed threatened to swallow Ion whole, but a fraction of a second before impact... Listen to me! With a swing of Ion's axe, the wall of fire was split cleanly in half. Not bad at all, human. You're the only one who's managed to defend yourself against my first strike. However, you'll not find victory on this day. Now, you may make your attack. Arthur, however, did not do what Ragulis said. Instead, he lowered his weapon. Why are you standing still? A human of your ability might actually be capable of injuring me. I didn't come here to fight you. I do not understand. Humans have always appeared before me, seeking to demonstrate their strength. What other reason could there possibly be for one of your kind to come before me? <gasps> Are we getting a CG of them? Oh, great dragon Ragulies. I am Arthur, a puny, insignificant human. I am not here because I want to challenge you. I am here because I want to be your friend. My friend, you say? Obviously, his Ion's hand, but still, it's going to be a CG in a minute. And this day marked the beginning of the odd and wondrous days that Arthur and Ragulies spent together. Really? That's all we got of the CG? Come on, come on, there's more to it. It'll pop up later, it's fine. Whenever Arthur paid a visit, he'd come bearing stories of the outside world. Oh, way north from here, there's a coast where water spirits dominate. It's beautiful, so you should visit if you ever have the chance. The volcano southeast of here has recently been erupting less frequently, or so I hear. If the eruptions calm down, people might make towns and settlements around there. I can't wait to see what kind of place it'll be. However, 
after one year had passed, our fears suddenly stopped showing up. Hey, you, Faye over there! Do you know the whereabouts of this human? Slightly concerned, Raggedy's asked a Faye in the forest about our fears' situation. Wait, a dragon's talking to me! Well, well my lord, I hear the human is headed toward an impoverished... Pet that human... I was headed toward an impoverished village in the south. I see. Regulus traced Arthur's path, and at his destination he saw the youth being pelted by scornful words in a devastated village. Oi, Arthur! <laughs> Zephora gets to be the snarky bitch. If it's cultivated the crops in the way you told me, but they're not growing at all. You can't do much about that. And the soil here is infertile. Unless we try over and over again, it's not... Excuses aren't going to solve our urgent problems. My kids are waiting at home hungry. I understand. It's my mistake. I'll go forage for fruits in the forest. So please make do with that for now. After the angry villagers left, Bragulies revealed himself. Bragulies... Why are you here, of all places? Why is a question I should be asking you? Why did you just let them condemn you? You can simply silence unreasonable accusations with your strength. You're more than capable of it. Using my physical strength would be the easy solution, yeah. But the purpose of power isn't fighting others. See, we're teaching them lessons. It's to protect the things we cherish. Regulies, if you don't mind, could you help me look for fruit? Regulus didn't look convinced in the least, but he decided to keep silent for now. However, when the village came under attack by bandits one day, he saw a scene that made him doubt his eyes. Though it was an uphill battle, Arthur fought to the end to protect the humans that had blamed him unjustly. Arthur, you... fought to protect us? All we've done is shove our complaints onto you, but you... And don't worry about it. The right person in the right place, as they say. I happen to be born with more strength than other people. I'm sure I was given this gift so I could protect those without power. I only did what's within my abilities. At those words, the villagers apologized and thanked Arthur one after another. Sorry about blaming you before. Weren't around. Dead right now. Thanks. And... Come to this village again sometime. I'll receive you with the delicious vegetables that will, will grow here. I promise. My entire family will welcome and host you. I can't wait for that day. After the villagers left, Arthur cradled the chloris that had just bloomed in his hand, then said, Regulies, you're there, aren't you? Now he's got a chloris flower in his hand! Did you take a good look? This is the strength I believe in. The small, lone flower looked like it was the furthest thing from strength. Despite its size, however, the flower was brimming with a warm life force. I see. So this is what you spoke of. I shall admit it, Arthur. You're the strongest person in the world. With that, a friendship was born between the strongest man and the strongest fay. Hey, Regulies, don't you think it's a little wasteful that only we get to admire the beauty of the Chloris? I agree. We should share this beauty with as many people as possible. Are you going to give me the full CG? There you go, full CG! Well, okay, bit by bit, but we're getting the full CG. Ion, still on the roll of Arthur, swung his weapon. With each movement came wind as his arcs left trails of rainbows in the air, accompanied by a flurry of, shin of shining flowers scattering around. I like how, like, they, they show his hand as if you're going to see Vilio in the CG, but I know it's just a straight-up Ion CG. Wow! That's so cool! Rainbows! The strength that his weapon symbolized wasn't something that conquered others. I love the fact that he's making rainbows with his weapon, and you're like, he's the big, tough, evil gladiator that killed a lot of people. But he's so squishy and soft on the inside, and he makes rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, so fucking adorable. Instead, its purpose was to protect and deliver smiles to everyone. 
The story of Arthur and Ragulies wasn't the only thing that projected this message. I could feel Ion's earnest heart from his powerful strikes. <laughs> Looks like it's a great success. Shelly is way too good. He can even make rainbows with his magic. Okay, well, Pashalia was doing it. But still, they're all around Ion, but... Yes, agreed. It's a combined display of Pashalia's magic and the wind spirits, whom Zephora and Ginia asked to help. I have seen him many times during our rehearsals, but I feel that this time was the most beautiful. Right? Don't right, gorgeous. We gotta give everyone in the venue a good look. Indeed. And now let us do this one more time. Ooh, now we're Ion. Switching. Oh, I had never noticed it said switching up in the top corner. I mean, I can see that it says that you see their sprite and then you see their name, but like... With every swing, a beautiful rainbow bridge was built. And glittering flowers raced in the air. And the beautiful sight filled my eyes. And the cheers of our audience filled my ears. Why is it going so slow all of a sudden? And what I saw in the past were not colors, but blood. And what scattered about were not petals, but my opponent's pain. Over and over and over. Before I had realized... I had mastered the ability to keep my mind blank whenever I stood on a stage. To blind my eyes. To steal my heart. To wholeheartedly hope that it would end quickly while enduring the throb in my right eye. Those were my only thoughts when I would swing my blade. However, now a part of me at the back of my mind is wishing that this moment would last forever. It was an impossible desire, yet... I could not stop myself from dreaming. I felt myself asking, who in the world were the ones that made me think this way? It was the members of Circus, and... I snuck a glance at the wing, and a girl entered my vision. She was grinning as she looked at me. Are you looking at me? Is this you falling in love with me? Like, stop it. Our eyes only met for a second, but... You can do this. I saw her mouthing that to me. Fighting and winning by knocking someone down with force... I admit, that is one form of strength. However... True strength is not just about physical prowess. Even if the shackles branded onto my right eye were still there, someone like me could still make people smile. My comrades who taught me that were surely many, many times stronger than the likes of me. I'm sorry, but that was like the sweetest little moment. That we had, like, that was so romantic and we're not even in his route. But, like, I I gotta be honest, at this point, like, I love Zephora and I kind of want to save him for later. But I kind of almost want to go down Ion's route first. Just because, like, he's just the sweetest little marshmallow. And, like, right now he kind of intrigues me the most. I'll never not love Zephora. But, especially that moment, it was like... That's so sweet and romantic almost. And I don't think like Zephora, I don't think he had a moment where he was specifically had this little moment with us. You know what I mean? But then again, he's a little cold. It's going to take a little longer, but like, I don't know something about that moment. It's like, Oh, steal my heart. Like, stop it. I was not expecting that to happen. Like I was expecting that we're going to go down your route and we're going to enjoy it because again, I like every one of these characters even from the very beginning, but, like, Ion intrigued me. Well, I didn't say, would, don't want to say intrigued me the least, but, like, was probably maybe at the bottom of the list, just because we hadn't seen it. Like, you're there, and I know you've got something else, but you're not giving me anything yet in the very beginning of the game. Everybody else has a little more personality, and he's just kind of there, which, you know, I mean... Fair and also unfair. It's fair because he is just there, but you know, and I knew, you're going to have more of a story. There's going to be more to you than this. You're not actually as, I don't want to say bland, but it, it's not that you're bland. It's just they're holding everything back on you until this moment. Rightly so. It works so much better this way. But now I'm like way more intrigued than I was. It was like, you're still kind of handsome and I know you got something going on. I'm like, okay, you know he's going to be a sweetheart, you know, but... This is just so, it gives you so much more. And it's like, I kind of like that they waited. And it's like, oh, now I'm a little more excited about your route, you know? Like, I knew I would enjoy it. But I was like, oh, I can't wait. It was like, 
I've got the least amount of information about him and the like up until this like this chapter. And then this chapter is like, here's everything, and you're like, God damn it, you held this back for me and I love it because it's so wonderful and it like I think it opens your heart to him a lot more, like faster than if you slow, like everyone else, you're like, oh, I like this one. This guy's kind of fun. Okay. You're starting to get to know them. And Ion just like slaps you in the face with everything. You're like, oh, stop. I can't take it all at once. <laughs> I really do love all the characters though. So yeah. Anyway, you're splitting cheers and applause were the curtains that closed out this warrior's performance of flowers. <gasps> I did not take a breath before that. The remnants of the rainbows danced in the air in the company of the applause, and almost as if they were nodding in agreement that we had created something lasting in the people's hearts. The flora slowly unraveled its petals and bloomed. Oh, good job. That night, after the show and teardown had both ended without incident, once again, great work, everyone. Great work! We surrounded the recently bloomed floor with drinks in hand and overflowing exhilaration in our hearts. No one prompted it or anything. The next thing we knew, we found ourselves toasting as if it were the natural next thing to do. Oh my god, Rady's in human form, why? Dude, what did I just say earlier? I'm like, he's always in fluffball form, and like when he shows up in hot boy form, it's like, what are you doing? It's so disjointing. But I kind of love it, but also, like, I like that they only throw him in in hot boy form every once in a while, though. Like, there is a part of me that is like, why why aren't you in hot boy form more often? Be in hot boy form. But I kind of like it because then, you know, you're just used to seeing him as a fluff ball. It kind of is disjointing when you see me like, whoa, hey, whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then you know when you get down his route, he's going to be in hot boy form more often, and it's going to be, like, a whole new character, and it's going to be like, oh my god, this is so awkward, and I love it, but, like, I'm flustered now. <laughs> like, <sighs> You know, when only around ten or so peeps came at first, I was convinced we were doomed. But now that the flowers safely bloomed, the sense of accomplishment's amazing. And it's funny, too, because the voice fits the fluff ball, but when you see him in human form, it's like it doesn't quite fit. I think it's because I'm so, I don't know if it's just me or if it's like, it's not that it doesn't fit. It's like, I'm so used to seeing him in fluffball form and the voice I've associated with that, that when he's in human form, I'm like, it's like, I feel like I should have a different voice for you, but like, we're not gonna, obviously. In my case, I thought we had little hope the moment I saw a lineup back in our theater. A barbaric wild dragon, a head stuck in the clouds, a statue, a furball, then a slacker and some baggage. I'm honestly impressed that such a ragtag group managed to make it this far. That's the nicest thing you've ever- <laughs> He looks so stressed out! The wrinkle between his fucking eyebrows! <laughs> oh, Zephora. Oh, Zephora! You forgot to include the, sque the scheming grouch! <laughs> I don't remember anyone being a grouch at any point in time. No, he's not gonna refute the scheming part. He is a grouch, though. By the way, Reedy, why are you in a- in that form right now. Usually stay cute when we're eating. I <laughs> like how he's like, you're, you're not in the cute form. Yeah, but when he's in fluffball form, he's cute. When he's in boy form, he's beautiful, so. Are you trying to say I should turn back? Well, I'm just in the mood, I guess. It's easier to toast in this form. Miss Maisie was shocked silent back in Kalita, but she's pretty used to it now, so why not transform from time to time? Uh, sorry about back then. That was on me. I'm fine now. Rest assured. Although it does make it awkward when you're like curling up in bed and you've got your little fluff ball that you normally like snuggle with. And then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You cannot turn into hot boy form while we're snuggling in bed. Like you can't go to sleep with me as fluff ball and then turn into hot boy in the middle of the night. That is, that is not okay. <laughs> I like it. Don't get me wrong, but it's still not okay. <laughs> Rady, taking some liberties. Indeed, anyone would be surprised if their family suddenly looks so different. Um, but this form is a part of Rady as well. I mean, she's changed in a good way. The subject of change. You have too, Vilio. Who? Me? Yeah, you were amazing on the stage today. Back in Cultura, just trying to memorize lines was a struggle for you. But today your acting was amazing. 
You really seemed like that legendary dragon. Ah, uh, you're embarrassing me. All my hard work was worth it. Who would have thought that Vilio could pull off that act? Looking at him now, he seems like a whole other person. Ah, uh, we got to see a new side of Ion, too. And that was nice. You... From my perspective, I'm not sure whether I felt that way. However, I am glad that despite all my mistakes during practice, I managed to perform perfectly on the actual day. You weren't even able to feign a smile at first. But in the end, you were beaming all right. You've really changed, my guy. Do you think so? I do not remember smiling deliberately. And then it must have been a spontaneous one. Smiling when you want to, and because you want to, is the best, don't you think? And that's proof you've improved and changed. You know, Pashali and Zephora have done their share of changing as well. You... So? The only change I underwent, underwent was my increased tolerance towards certain weirdos. You are all weirdos! He is Sam the Eagle from the Muppets, 100%. Ah, jeez! Could you learn to be an iota more honest? On occasions like these, just boost yourself with some liquor and be happy. Huh. Oh. Hey, if he keeps drinking, maybe we'll get to see a, a real Saint Zephora. Oh, good idea. Oh, there you go. Have some more, young man. <laughs> I would love to see Zephora drunk and actually like, you know what, Vilio? I used to hate you, but man, I actually love you. And I'm only mean to you because... I just don't know how to open up. <laughs> Stop. Don't try and coerce me into it. These things are better enjoyed at my own preferred pace. <laughs> Before his way of speaking seemed to be the exact same as when I'd first met him, but... Not the difference. Everyone had changed, and so had I. I fixed my eyes on the faintly glowing flora and took a sip of my warm tea. A radiant flower of joy, huh? At long last, there was only one flora left. That's right. It's kind of sad because you're like, I enjoy traveling around with these chuckle fucks. I can finally get back to the sweet, sweet capital. Sitting around the table with you guys is great and all, but I'm starting to miss my lovely bed back home. Why are you guys making it sound like the whole party's over already? Don't worry, I know. We can't let our guards down until it's truly said and done. Well... Let's hope that we won't have to repeat our last show in the capital. A repeat of our last show, I think is what said, but I don't want to experience having zero spectators again. Ah, uh, devoid our tent be burning down would be nice, too. I know, I know, it was my bad. I won't ever do that again. I've learned that much. Well, you've gotten better at controlling your magic, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Famous last words. And speaking of improved magic, that applies to Pashalia as well. Right. At first he said he didn't want to use it since it wasn't his cup of tea. But his spells in the show were amazing. So? In terms of water magic, he might even ri rival the royal family. Oh. Does it be nice a clock in your timetable? <laughs> Zephora praised me. <laughs> hey, Zephora! What about me, huh? Just a plain old volcano in the guise of a lizard. Uh, pardon me. That's impolite to volcanoes. I take it back. I feel like Zephora is meaner to Vilio because he actually really loves him. <laughs> you know his character! Like, you're only mean- You're just mean because you love him! When you're nice to people, it's like, yeah, you're alright, I guess. But you're really mean, you're like, but I love you to death, man. You're my bro. That's why I'm mean to you, because I can't admit that you're my bestie. Zephora and Bilio, best friends forever. They make the perfect best friend combo. To be fair, you know what I mean? The grouchy bitch, and then the super happy peppy one. It's just kind of annoying, but cute at the same time. Wouldn't hurt you to praise me too once in a while. Alrighty. Surround him, guys. We'll get him drunk. Here you go. This drink is very delicious. Hey, hold up. That is a crazy alcohol percentage. Oh, fine, fine. I'll make a special exception and give you this premium wine reserved for yours truly. Ugh, quit it. Don't gang up on me. Aw, oh, we're peer pressuring him to drink. Guys, this isn't a frat party. Leave him alone. 
I savored the lively conversation, and before I knew it, I'd finished my tea. Spacey, lend me your cup. I shall refill it. Thanks, Ion. Look, he's just trying to worm his way and to make him be our first boyfriend. I really think I'm leaning toward doing his route first. In the beginning, I had run away from him, scared. But now I'd grown familiar to the mismatched sight of Ion pouring a teapot. Hockey steam rose as he did, and while watching it dance, I spoke to him. Ion, great work at the show today. Thank you. It only went so well because you were there. He gave me a nod before shifting his gaze to the flora. See, he's hitting on us. I was a gladiator, and the only thing I knew was how to wield a sword. I've always thought that the only way to entertain an audience was to hurt people. My hands used to be covered in blood in this place, the dual city. And I never imagined the people here would applaud me for any other reason. It brings me more joy than I could ever ex than I ever expected. Probably hadn't told us his full story yet. No, not till his route. And everyone likely was aware of that. However, none of us intended to pry. After all, even if we didn't have the whole picture, he was still the Ion we cherished. My hunch told me that the true burden Ion bore was something dark and heavy, likely something I could never imagine. But for this one single moment, he seemed to be released from that weight. And please, allow me to say this once more. Thank you. Lan gave me a faint smile, and I returned it with a wide grin. How sweet. <gasps> Intermission! Go get your popcorn, guys. I was actually just double-checking. I was looking in the guide, because I'm like, I know that the soft recommended... Route order is Zephora, Pashalia, then Ion. But Zephora, Pashalia, and Ion's routes do not divulge any substantial plot spoilers. So I think it's fine to switch them up. So. And then obviously Rady. So I think we will maybe switch them up. I'm still not 100% sure. I love Zephora though, and I kind of do want to save him for later. I want to savor it a little bit longer. And like right now. Like, out of everybody, like, Ion's intriguing me the most. Because, like, you know, we just had that little moment just now, and it's really, really sweet. So, anyway. We traveled down the long route from Ferris to Arthur. Finally, one night, as we were drawing closer to our destination... Did we get the Chapter 5 card? I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at the guide. I was trying to look at the thing. Wow! Dinner tonight's, well, more fancy than usual. Uh. Ferris's beer's the stuff. A job snagging it past me. Ferris beer. A camel-colored beer made from Ferris barley with a boozy and unusual flavor. Its barley is roasted at a high temperature, fitting for a beer made in a city ruled by the great spirit of fire. Often sold in the arena, it's a must-have drink while watching a match. We also had a stir-fry dish made with the generous heaping of spices that we had procured in Cultura. We'd enjoyed aquapaza and orions, but on the menu tonight was not so aqua pasta recreated with substitute ingredients. Not so aqua pasta. <laughs> a fish dish. Fish is sautéed with olive oil and garlic, then poached in a mixture of white wine, shellfish, tomato, and water. With many variations out there, seafood is cheap in Orient, and this dish is often seen on the dinner tables. Our meat from Ferris was still fresh, so we lightly seasoned it before grilling it. All these dishes and more were on the table in a glorious display. A joint effort between me and Ion. I mean, like, we're like cooking buddies, too. It's spicy in our kitchen, you know what I'm saying? We've exhausted all our remaining ingredients, after all. Everyone, please eat to your heart's content. Still, you invested way too much into this. What are we going to do for breakfast tomorrow? <laughs> well, I think it's worth it. Leftovers. This will be our last meal inside our camp, after all. Like Pashalia said... If everything went according to plan, we'd enter at the outskirts of the city around noon tomorrow. And having leftover ingredients would be a waste, so I think we're justified. Is something wrong, Vilio? You do not seem to be making much progress on your meal. Uh, no, it's just... When I think that this is the last meal that Ion and Specie will make for me, I can't bear to finish it. Well, well. Congratulations. 
After a tour around the world, you finally learn how to be reserved. Hey, I'm not being reserved at all! Take that back. Still a long way to go. I'm not sure about Ion, but you can eat at my cooking any time if you come to Lieber. Not when you do. I'll serve your drink personally. Call it a family and friends perk. You're no friend discount. Well, we're a business. We proudly serve good food, and we can't part with our pride and joy at a bargain. Not even for one or less. You're stingy. Hearing that from Ginia makes my blood boil. I watched everyone's lively banter as I took a bite of white, fi white fish fritter. Honestly, hard to believe. It seems like only yesterday that Spir Spiria, right, Spiria was encouraging me to join them. I think we've already finished our tour and are back at the capital. The first show we had in Kalita also feels so fresh in my memory. And back then, everyone ran wild without any consideration for our audience. I had no clue what I was doing at the start. Th start. Thinking back. Oh! Like we're getting. Oh! And our CG of our goddamn gorgeous soft clown. Look at him! His face is so soft and delicate right now for being such a bitch. That's why I want to save him. I don't want to do his route first. I definitely want to save him. And being able to realize that means you've at least matured somewhat. Is your brain capacity increased a little? Well, I suppose our show in, cult show in Cultura wasn't half bad. After that performance, the citizens are on their way to regaining their former glory. We're probably going to return to Cultura after our journey's done, right? Of course. Why, I joined the first place. Oh, I like how we're getting, like, flashback CGs. My personal fave was definitely our show in Orion's. A spectacular show of water and light. Humans and spirits joining hands in delight. Why, you can't get more elegant than that. I'd give it a perfect score of 100 points. Oh, it gets so many likes. Likes? What does that mean? Uh, I think he's praising us in his own Ginia sort of way. And that show was only possible because we were in the right place at the right time. It wasn't just us that pulled it off. It only worked out because all the spirits were willing to help. Oh, and there's our boyfriend Ion. It's funny because it's like almost as if the Kalita one was... I guess collectively almost everyone because like the CG for that was just a chibi CG. You know what I mean? But it was like, so it's kind of like, but I guess that would be more Rady and me because I was, I lived in Kalita. So with our parents and I'm pretty sure Rady was there. So that would be more like our city kind of story. But, like, I don't think Vilio makes sense for being the capital. You know? Interesting, though. Because, like, Rady and Vilio kind of, like, switched off. In the very first one, like, nobody was really, like... It wasn't centered or focused on anyone. But I guess, I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. Because, like, Vilio and Rady are, like, kind of... You've saved those off to the end, so there's not really, like... A heavy chapter for the city they came from where like everybody else does have one oh well, we'll see he thinks the show in ferris was pretty good too probably because of our experience with the other shows but everyone's acting was superb oh whoops sorry i love that he thinks the show in ferris was pretty good <laughs> what are you doing with you are you slurring your words um, personally um, parts of it were somewhat mortifying but the cheers of the audience felt more vivid to me than our other shows. Whether it be stories of hardship during promotion... I'm sorry, just got a yawn out of nowhere. Or our countless failures during practice. Looking back, every single moment became a precious gem of our journey together. If we were to discuss each individual show one by one, it'd probably never end, but... Alrighty then. My plates are empty now, so I think we should end things here. Chop chop! It had gotten rather late before we'd even noticed. Yeah. I get you don't want this to end. But we might have an audience with His Majesty tomorrow. It'd be rude to show up with bags under your eyes. With that, Ginny's words marked the end of the evening. I then returned to my tent and got into bed. A little while later... Fluffball? Oh, I wasn't used to this at all at first. 
sleeping in a tent is the norm for me now, huh? The evening breeze is so nice. Are we gonna have a dream again? Ugh, it's no good. I can't sleep. I was wrapped up in my blanket, but rest just wouldn't come to me. Hey, Rady, are you still awake? No, nope, I'm out cold. That's so. I can't sleep for some reason. Can we chat for a bit? Rady leapt off his hammock with a wry smile as soon as I asked. I do love the fact that we got freaked out, like, Oh my god, you have a hot boy form, what the fuck? But he still sleeps in a little hammock in our tent. Like, that's not, like, as long as he's in his, like, furball form, like, we disassociate the fact that there's a hot guy sleeping across the way. Like, because he's in his furball form to make us comfortable. Like, it's kind of adorable. You never change, do you? You've always been the type that can't get to bed whenever you're nervous or uneasy. Wait. He leapt off his hammock. Is he popping up on our bed like your dog? The night before that dish you came up with went into the official menu, for example. Hey, that was only because I was worried whether anyone would order it and... Or when Sperio was sick in bed with a cold. How could I ever sleep when either of you were ill? I'd be worried sick myself. And we engaged in anima as we engaged in animated chatter, I let out a wistful whisper. Before we talk about Lieber, I can't help but start missing home. Well, it's the first time you've been apart from Sperio for so long. Yeah, I want to see her again so much. I don't feel lonely, though. I've met so many people and overcome all kinds of extraordinary situations with everyone. I've learned so much, I never want to stop cherishing the moments we've had, even after this is all over. There's so many things I want to tell Speria. That's why I can't wait to see her. You've changed too, huh? Me? Nah, don't worry about it. Brady's eyes narrowed as if he were relishing an emotion I couldn't place before he walked off at a brisk pace. Let's head to the kitchen and grab something to drink. You'll feel sleepy after that. Sounds like a plan. I guess some warm milk would be nice. As we talked, we walked out of our tent. Then... We found Ginny alone and sipping from a wine glass, looking solemn. Aww. No, don't be sad. I know we can't date you and it makes me sad too. Wait, Ginny? Oh my... You two are awake, too. And didn't I tell you to get some sleep for tomorrow? You're one to talk, Ginia. You're always going on, going on about how Stainably ruins beauty. Shouldn't you be conked out? Huh. Leave me alone. Shockingly enough, I'm in a sentimental mood for one, so I'm exempt. Tilted the glass and downed its contents in one go before letting out a small whisper. My journey is at its end, so I suppose I'll take this chance to be honest. At first, I had... Like, absolutely no hope that our journey would be successful. The mission to Bloom Flora was basically dumped onto me by those ministers to begin with. That's why, well, I thought if I went around assembling a bunch of people that seemed relatively motivated, then toured around, made it seem like we were serious and put on events, I'd be able to make convincing excuses when we flopped. Well, that's why the cost you put together was such a mixed bag, huh? A fabled dragon, a sus info broker, an odd contractor, a problematic ex-gladiator, then exceptions, a normal girl in a furball. You know, now that I think about it, the gears of fate only began turning after I invited you two to join, huh? Right. If you guys weren't around, we wouldn't have made it this far. That's probably an exaggeration. But I suppose it's true they came in surprisingly handy. Never, no one can sleep. Uh, you guys. Apologies. My eyes refuse to remain shut despite my efforts. I think about how this is our last night and that our journey ends here. Sleeping in a way feels like such a waste. So everyone felt the same way, huh? Oh, I love our man harem. Let's just stay together forever, guys. Oh, everyone. I told you to get your beauty rest. What a problematic bunch. Contrary to his words, Genius smiled, and I could sense his genuine joy in it. Well, since we're all already here, let's enjoy the breeze for a little while. We all conk out in the little couches and tables, like, around. <laughs> kind of cute. We all wake up in, like, a pile on the floor. Aw, cuddle pile. Hey, look! The stars are especially pretty tonight. Twinkling. Spirits. 
in a grassy plain a bit from our camp. We were all sitting down and admiring the sky together. I guess we should have stopped before we got to this, but sorry. I was distracted and very involved. Shooting star. That reminds me. Do you all know the legend that if you make a wish before the shooting star leaves the sky, it'll come true? And the time you talk, we didn't have time. Really? I never heard that before. It's not like we need to ask a shooting star. Our wishes, our wishes really will be granted soon. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. You're gonna borrow that mystic tool stored in the castle, right, Zephora? Yeah. This brings back memories. You know, we say, I don't owe you an explanation. Back when we first left our theater, wouldn't you? In contrast to back then, you're practically a stranger. His toughness is as sharp as always, though. Silence. I'm not the only one who's different. Applies to everyone here. Ion, for example, claimed that he was a former officer here under orders. That turned out to be a complete lie. I... Sorry about that. Well, I didn't know that you were lying about your past... Well, I did know you were lying about your past from the very beginning. Ion, you mentioned you didn't have a wish because you were joining under orders. You? That a lie, too? In terms of my lack of wish, it... It was not a lie. I really did participate under orders. I think everyone already knows by now, but Ali really did tell him to join. Although, that actually has a direct connection to what he really wants. Yes, I'm aware. The plan Aless proposed, in truth, will be a step toward granting my desire. Ion placed a hand against his eye patch before fixing his gaze on Pashalia. I shall return that question. What about you, Pashalia? You said you weren't going to ask for mystic tools. Oh, you were going to ask for mystic tools to give your parents, right? Did, yeah. Now, slightly different, too. It is. Oh, it is. I was going to, I thought it said, is it? And then I was like, is it? It is? Like, good lord. Hmm. <clears throat> there was something I was looking for. Something I thought I might find during our travels. My love, you do have that. I might manage it. So I might try asking the king for help. What kind of something would that be? Ashalia wore a troubled smile. He poked the water hourglass at his hip lightly before answering in a subdued voice. <laughs> it's a secret. Hey! Don't leave us hanging like that! I know now. Forcing someone to expose their secrets isn't very nice. What about you guys, then? You mentioned you were going to think along the way. Have you made up your mind? Oh, uh, well, Miss Macy, how are things on your end? Um, hmm, I'm not sure. Stop biting me. When I'd left Arthur, I'd thought about using my wish for Spiria's sake. It remained unchanged. I still wanted to choose something that would benefit Spiria and Rady, but... It's not a wish I'd like the king to grant, and it doesn't have to happen, so happen soon. But I think that one day, I could travel around the world again with everyone, just like this. It'd be nice. It'd have been a casual suggestion on my part. For a second, everyone froze as if they'd rehearsed that movement. It's brief, however. A heartbeat later. Don't speak nonsense. My journey with this oddball's group, with this oddball group's finally about to end, you know. On trip of this scale requires hefty funding. Without a proper goal, setting such a sum aside would be rather difficult. I do think it sounds fun, but I never waits for anyone. Well, if we're able to go traveling again one day, it would be a great time. No one declined, declined outright, but none of them voiced their agreement either. Heartbreaking. I can tell they're not against the idea, but... Aw, oh, shooting star. Feeling a little awkward, I stared up at the sky and happened to see a star racing across. Huh, another shooting star. Everyone stayed completely silent while the star blazed a trail across the night sky. I didn't know whether everyone made a wish, nor what they wished for, but... The one who broke the silence was Jinnia. Okay then, so let's get back to bed. We've spread smiles to everyone we've met along the way, so a sad end isn't our style. Well... I suppose you're right. The final showdown's still waiting for us. Exactly. We still have another floor to go, so we gotta work hard one more time. 
Huh. I think that Jinnia would be the one making motivational speeches. To buy a lottery ticket. We've come this far. Of course we'd want to end it on a happy note. And naturally, that note must gel with our fashion and brim with elegance, but... I suppose it isn't all that bad to get passionate about a finale sometimes. Don't you think? So mad we can't date that man. I love him so much. Anyway, now we'll stop, even though we should have stopped five minutes ago. But like, oh, now we're in chapter five. Look at that. Perfect place to stop, guys. Bravo me. I did it on accident. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Thank you.